Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Us Podcast, Health Tips Weekly, Episode 30. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about purple hands and butterfly rash. Hmm, purple hands and butterfly rash, what do they mean? As unusual as they sound, they're actually symptoms of an autoimmune disease called systemic lupus erythematosus, which is also known as SLE. SLE is a long-term disease that can affect almost every part and organs in our body. As mentioned, SLE is an autoimmune disease, meaning that our body's immune system can attack our own tissues. As a consequence, this can lead to pain, swelling, and damage to our organs such as the kidneys and heart. SLE can be so debilitating that it can affect one's quality of life, or even worse, it may even cause death. To date, the exact cause of this disease is poorly understood. It is likely to be linked to genetics, but environmental factors are thought to play a role as well. Weirdly enough, SLE seems to overwhelmingly affect women, especially those in their childbearing age. Now, why is that so? It is thought that this is because of the effect of estrogen hormone present in women and the fact that women have more copies of X chromosomes compared to men. However, it is important to note that SLE that occurs in men is slightly different from that in women, and men tend to suffer more than women if they have SLE. People with SLE often have disease flares, in which their symptoms worsen, followed by a period of remission in which their symptoms improve. The frequency of these flares varies from person to person. Also, symptoms could be mild in some people, but it could be life-threatening in others. Fortunately, treatments are available to relieve symptoms, reduce inflammations, and to minimize organ damage. Majority of patients with SLE have skin problems at some point, the most common one being butterfly rash, which is the main significant sign of SLE mentioned in the beginning of this video. This rash appears as redness in butterfly shape over the cheeks and nose after patient is exposed to the sun. This rash usually lasts only a few days, but it often comes back. In addition to that, some people with SLE also develop circular patches of rays, scaly skin, called discoid lupus erythematosus, DLE, which often leads to scarring. Patients with SLE are very sensitive to UV light from the sun, which is a condition known as photosensitivity. Such sensitivity can lead to development of skin rash after being exposed to sunlight. If you have SLE, here are a few tips for you to follow to minimize or avoid photosensitivity. First tip, make sure you apply sunscreen with an SPF of 50 or greater every day even if you don't plan to spend a lot of time outdoors. The sunscreen should be applied 20 minutes before going outside and should be reapplied again after every 2 hours. Another helpful tip is to always wear sun protective clothing when you're outdoor and also to avoid sun exposure during the midday between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Last but not least, make sure to avoid medications that could make photosensitivity worse. Examples of these medications are NSAIDs, painkillers, metformin, hydrochlorothiazide, and amiodarone. However, you should not stop taking these medications without consulting your doctor first. If you are worried that the medications may worsen your SLE, speak to a doctor or a pharmacist. Other than the above mentioned preventive strategies, there are actually various topical treatments available for managing skin conditions in SLE. The first topical treatment option is topical steroids. Topical steroids come in various strengths and potencies. In the case of SLE, more potent topical steroids such as clobetasol propionate may be required. Cautious use of topical steroids is important to avoid common side effects like skin thinning or stretch marks. Another treatment option is topical calcineurin inhibitors. They typically cause less side effects but they are actually more expensive than topical steroids. Did you know that some patients with SLE can develop a condition called Raynaud's disease? This condition causes the fingers and toes to turn white or purple-blue. 
Individuals with SLE only experience this when they have an attack, which is usually triggered by cold temperatures or emotional stress. Now, how did this condition happen? This is because people with Raynaud's disease have an abnormal or defective vessel constriction mechanism. As a result, the blood vessels constrict in an exaggerated way in response to cold or emotional stress, leading to Raynaud's attack. Smaller arteries that supply blood to the skin become narrow and limit the blood flow to affected areas. In a typical attack, the fingers or toes become suddenly cold as the blood vessels constrict. The skin color can even change to purple or blue in color. And this attack usually causes discomfort, including a pins and needles feeling or numbness. There are a few ways to reduce Reynolds attack on people who have them. As Reynolds attack can be triggered by cold temperature, we are advised to avoid sudden cold exposure. And this could be done by dressing warmly, by wearing layer clothing such as thermal underwear or even using hat and gloves. Studies have also found that SLE patients who quit smoking are less sick and have fewer Reynolds attack. If you are interested in quitting smoking with the help of nicotine replacement therapy, you can consult a doctor or a pharmacist. Next, we are advised to avoid medications that can cause vessel constriction, and the examples of these medications are pseudoephedrine and ergotamine. If you have any doubts, do not hesitate to talk to any healthcare professional. Hmm, what do I do if a Reynolds attack already happened? To end Reynolds attack, simply place the hands under warm water or in a warm place such as the armpits. You could even rotate your arms in a whirling windmill pattern. For more severe Reynolds attack, doctors may prescribe a class of medication called calcium channel blocker, pseudonafil, or nitroglycerin cream. So, it has come to the end of this week's episode. If you have any questions related to steroids, you can always consult our professional doctors and healthcare professional on Doc to Us. And feel free to download Doc to Us app on Apple App Store, Google Play Store, and Huawei App Gallery. Take care, and we'll talk to you in the next episode.